Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you that you also have given us the opportunity to be together here to praise and to worship thee. We ask and pray that you will send us the Holy Spirit to guide us and take us nearer to thee. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Is it cold enough yet? Heat wave. Heat wave, yeah, okay. Uh, I was thinking as I was coming up here whether I shouldn't wait till the first day of the next term to finish my testimony and we can talk about something else today, something more important. What do you think? No? Wrong? Okay. If that's the case, then I got a question for you. Michael, could you read your verse, please? Right after he reads, then Junior will read, and then I have my question. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it reads, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Junior, please. Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. I know it's been a day or so, almost two days since we spoke last, but which one of these two verses most applies to my last chapel talk? Go ahead. Romans, all things work together for good. I remember uh, that you said you had uh, a business dealing with chicken, and for some reason you ended up <laughs> moving away, and you found out that God did it. So you made it. He's been reading my notes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I couldn't believe, you know, when my business all of a sudden started going down here, I couldn't understand that, Lord, I don't understand this. But then today, looking back, it's quite clear, right? All right, good. Where did we stop yesterday? I mean, third, Tuesday? The last thing I said Tuesday. I was kicked out of the church. All right. I need to clarify that a little bit. It wasn't like a official kicking out but in synthesis it was I was kicked out because they did, took all my responsibilities and all that they wouldn't let me talk in church if I sat at a Sabbath school class anything I said they would contradict okay anyway but the reason was that I was accused of being a member of a dissident group called Taquara. Mm -hmm. Does anyone here know Taquara or have heard of Taquara before? Okay, you haven't? Oh. There was a ministry in Brazil called Taquara that was started by a student from Harlan called Diego Silva. Okay? So they accused me of participating in being a member of that ministry. I had never heard of it. So I said, well, since I've been accused of it, I'm going to find out what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, so that very month, I was kicked out in November. No, in December, I went to one of their camp meetings. And I was so impressed, I never stopped going back. And so, during the next few months or so, they asked me to participate more actively, so I started working there. You know, I wasn't just a member now. And during the period that I was working at Taquara, I also had a secular job. I was a consultant. And in one of my consulting days, I had an accident with the machine, 
that took my arm. But I'm going to be a little more uh, candid about how it happened to show you the scope of the miracle that the Lord worked on me and for me, okay? It may be a little graphic, but bear with me. I got to the business about 9 o'clock in the morning, and they took me to the machine that they were having issues with. This machine, what it does, it's a big machine. It's probably from the wall over here, and it presses cinder blocks, okay, from concrete. It gets concrete, presses it, and shoots out cinder blocks. That's what this machine does. Well, it was a brand new machine from China, and it was having issues in... I noticed right away one of the issues, so I asked them to shut down the machine, and they started, they shut it down and started taking all the safety equipment off of it because it's got guards and all that. And as they were doing so, I decided to take a picture because I saw another issue. And since I was teaching also about this business, I decided to take a picture to use in my classes. And as I put my arm in with the camera to get close to the problem, the machine activated and pulled my arm about 12 to 15 inches, the doctor assumes, because it didn't rip it out. It just pulled out. Pulled me into the machine Okay, and then it stopped. Now I'm stuck there with my arm pulled, jammed up against the machine, and I remember feeling a lot of blood running out. And I prayed, very simple prayer. Lord, I'm not ready to die. I'll be lost if I die now. That's all I said. And the peace came over me you guys would not believe. I looked around. There was probably 30, 25 to 30 guys present because they were all supposed to learn what was going to happen. Half of them were passed out. The other half was throwing up. Oh. And <laughs> the one guy that was still conscious, I suppose I could say that, was the operator. And he's looking from the other side of the machine, but this machine is very loud. Even when it was stopped, it was loud. And he's like questioning me, what do I do now? I said, you're the operator, but no, I didn't say that. So I told him what to do, and he did it, and the machine released my arm. All right, now I got my arm with my left arm. And they put me in a car, just anybody's car, I don't even know who, who it was. And the guy drove out of the parking lot in such a hectic manner that we almost missed the bridge that we were supposed to take to cross the river. And I said, stop! I yelled out and the guy slammed on the brakes thinking I was probably dying. I said, if you keep this up, none of us will reach the hospital life. <laughs> So then he drove a little more careful, and we got to the hospital. I walked onto the operating table, and then I don't know what happened from then on. Okay? The doctor came to talk to me about, I don't know how many hours after the surgery. It was night. And he said that he witnessed a miracle. I said, yeah? He says, I tried to save your arm, but there was no way to save the arm. But you must realize that you had an artery ruptured completely. The brachial artery that goes through the arm was ruptured. And for most of you, you understand that with an artery ruptured, you probably don't live more than a couple of minutes. 
They told me it took 18 minutes to start the surgery from the time that um, the accident happened, at least approximately, okay? 18 minutes, I had a ruptured artery. Oh, but that's not all. When the machine pulled me into it, it broke six of my ribs, and one of my ribs went into my lung. I couldn't feel any of this, trust me. None of this was pain to me then, then. Today, in my head, if I become upset, stressed out, or nervous, I have excruciating pains that I can't control. But thank the Lord, he takes care of all that, okay? Now, when the doctor talked to me and told me he took my arm, I prayed and I said, Lord, I don't care. The only thing I need is that you will support me, that you will give me peace of mind knowing that this is the best thing that could have happened. And if you analyze it, I could have died, right? Yeah. So it was the best thing that could have happened. All right? Because I've lost, I lost my arm, I learned a few things that the Lord wanted to teach me. I'll just tell you guys one. I was very self-confident. Usually I didn't have a lot of time to spend with people teaching specific little things because I would lose my patience. I would just do it. Well, when I lost my arm, guess what happened? Now I need all of you. <laughs> so now I'm more capable of doing what I think the Lord wanted me to do. That's just one of the things that was a consequence of losing my arm. But there was another consequence that I really enjoy a lot more. There's only one way that I don't miss my arm. And that's when I'm close to the Lord. Because when I think carnally, it makes a difference. But when I don't, I don't even miss it. And remember, is Jesus coming back? Yes. Is he coming back soon? Yes. Am I going to get my arm back? Yes. No, I'm not. I'm going to get a better one. You know why? <laughs> On that particular arm, I had already had seven surgeries to make it work right. Because from the accident, when I broke my neck, yeah, I had plates, I had pins, I had all kinds of things in that arm. So I'm going to get a better one. All right. Now, I'm working at Taquara with a bunch of students just like you. And I enjoyed that. And I worked there for a few years. And then I finally bought a piece of land again. I never went back to the city to live, but I was renting farms from place to place because I never found the farm that I wanted again. And while working at Taquara, the Lord showed me a place and I bought it. And it took like a year to get all the paperwork settled. And I was so happy when it finally settled, we went in to get all the paperwork signed and it was done. I go back home that night with my wife. We're really, really happy about this. We're thanking the Lord. I get a phone call from someone at Heartland, Brother Hestripo. And he says, how would you like to come to work at Heartland? I said, Brother Hestripo, I just got my land. The dream I have had for a long time, the Lord just gave it to me today. <laughs> Today. And you're asking me to leave? I'll have to pray about it. So we prayed and we kept in touch and eventually I succumbed to the Lord's will and I came and visited Heartland. And when I went back, I told my wife, we're moving. 
So I built the house to put the things that I had in rented space in the house so we could move up here. To, so you guys understand just how much this affected my plans. We finished building the house on Tuesday, on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we moved. Friday, half an hour before sunset, we were done. Sabbath morning, I preached in a church in the town. Saturday night, I traveled here. That's how God had all planned out, okay? And I've been here for two and a half years, give or take a day or two. Now, I want to ask you guys, in all of what I've told you, have you seen God working in my life? Now, do you think he only works in my life? He works in all of our lives. All we have to do is give him the opportunity, give him the chance, give him our will. The rest he'll take care of. Now, I want to go back a little bit. Like I said, I used to be very self-confident. And I thought, okay, I knew it all. And then I started studying the Bible with much more emphasis. And would you believe it? I got more intelligent. Actually, studying the Bible made me more intelligent in the things that I did in the secular world. And I've had chapel talks here before, and I've told you guys, pay more time, spend more time in studying the Bible for learning's sake to get close to Jesus, then your studying time will be less. You'll be much smarter, and you, you'll utilize it much better. So spend more time with Jesus. The consequence will be Everything else will be easier in your life. But remember, Jesus wants a hundred percent. You can tell him you're having an issue. I can't give you my heart. I want to, but I can't. He will take care of that as long as you're sincere mm -hmm. that you want to give up your will to him. The rest he will take care of. This is the last day of the term. We probably won't see each other for a few weeks. And some of you, I don't know I'll, if I'll see again. But I want you to take this into consideration. Nothing today is more important than your relationship, personal relationship with Jesus. Nothing. Not one thing in this world is more important than your personal relationship with Jesus. Not the knowledge of him, not reading the Bible, studying the spirit of prophecy, nothing. Believe me, we are very, very close to the end. Very, very close. I believe and I'm praying that, I'm, that I participate in the final events, okay? That means you guys will too. <laughs> Got it? So, don't do what I did. Don't live somebody else's experience with Jesus. Have your own experience with Jesus. He will be more than willing to have this relationship with you. If Remember what he did to have this relationship with us? So he's not going to say no to anyone. He didn't say it to me, and I didn't, definitely didn't deserve it. Okay, so I pray that you will work on developing this personal and intimate, prioritize this relationship above all things and about, above all others. 
and you will be greatly compensated. Even in this world, that's what I pray for.